All right. Welcome, everybody. So this is a fun call. We have every month with our Real Estate Start School, we have um, a, a follow-up alumni call where we talk about different topics. We jump into specifics and people stories. And this month, um, one of my, I do, we're getting to do one of my favorite things, which is hearing success stories. So Rolando Archila was in our class earlier this year and was diligent and persistent and um, got to do his first deal. So I want to unpack that and sort of the format. Rolando, I'd like to, um, first of all, just let, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, then we'll talk about your deal. And, and then if I can go back and sort of unpack the process of what you've been through and what you've been doing and how you kind of got to where you are with your first deal. So does that sound good? Yeah. Awesome. 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 So yeah. You want to just get going? Yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Just, I'm just thinking like background, like pre real estate, what you're interested in, what you're up to, where you're from. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, my name is Rolando. I, uh, I'm originally from Guatemala. So that's where I was born and raised. And I actually came to the States for college. And, I, and then I ended up getting a, an internship from college, which led to a full-time job. And I ended up staying here in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is kind of like a culture shock if you're from Guatemala originally. <laughs> like yeah. the Midwest. I, I, I specifically was looking for things that were like a little bit different for me. <laughs> so <laughs> Midwest is that. Um, but I love it. So I've been here for about... Um, maybe eight years or so. And uh, yeah, so then my, my background was working in um, art marketing and strategy. So I was a strategy and innovation consultant for a long time. And um, yeah, eventually I just, you know, started getting like a little bit of, a, of an itch to travel more to, you know, I was, I just kind of saw a, a point where I was like, you know, is this really what I want to be doing for the rest of my life? And I wanted to live a life that was a little bit more in line with my values. I wanted to have more impact on the world. I wanted to have a little bit more freedom. So, you know, that led me to first take like a little semi-retirement, mini retirement, I think is what, what we, <laughs> what you guys call it. But uh, yeah. it's so, so my wife and I, we went and we traveled for about eight months. We went to 15 countries, four continents uh, for, yeah, for about eight months. And it was just an, like an incredible adventure. Um, and we, you know, lived out of a backpack for a long time. And it was, it was just like one of the best things that, uh, that we ever did. So we, when we got back last year and we we're just like, how do we keep this going? You know, <laughs> we like, cause that feeling of the feeling of freedom and that idea of, of being able to like, uh, do whatever you want with your time and, 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 you know, living kind of like in accordance to our values. Uh, we really started looking into how to generate more passive income, more, uh, you know, time and location independent work. And that eventually led, among other things, which we can talk about too, but among other things, one of the things that that led me to was real estate. And that's how I found uh, Coach Carson's course. And I took that and then that's why we're here. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just love your story and it, the, the, the many retirement you talked about, I want to go back to that just for a second, because I know in my own experience and perhaps it sounds like with you, like, you take a trip like that and maybe you think it's a temporary thing and I'm just going to get away and do this. But at least in my experience is it, it's, it kind of changes you towards like Pandora's box. Like you can't go back in after you've done something like that and you've, you've kind of lived a little bit different life and gotten outside the box. Have you found that it's hard to go back to the normal approach? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's funny because actually just this morning, like I, I posted a quote on my, uh, on my business Instagram, which was, uh, an un like a, a mind that has been stretched by a, by a new concept cannot be unstretched, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's this idea for sure. It's, a, it's just like, it's such a mind expanding, uh, you know, especially when you travel to countries that are very, very different and when you meet people that are very, very different in cultures and, and whatnot, you do get this experience of like, wow, you know, there's this whole other, you, you do, I know nothing. Like I am one perspective out of seven and a half billion perspectives mm -hmm. and I am so ignorant. <laughs> and, <laughs> and also, and also in the sense that like it, it, you meet a lot of people on the, along the road, you know, who are like doing that full time or who, you know, who have like, who are your, your own age and maybe have like retired or have different ways in which they've set up their own lives and their own income. And that just opens your mind of like, oh, you know, there's, there's more than the like, oh, I have to get a job and then follow this path, you know, follow this like until I retire path. You know, there's many other paths. There's many other ways to live. And if many other people are doing it, why not me? You know, that was kind of my realization. It's like, why can't I be the one who, you know, like lives mm -hmm. my dream life? You know, the thing that I feel would be the best way to live. I love so, it. 
Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, so it's so cool to see like the different whys. Like, you, you mentioned kind of your why for getting into this and travel and making an impact. And um, yeah, to me, that's what it's all about. And, and so you know, I know we're going to get into like specifics of real estate, but I like to start there because we can like feel your passion and see why, you know, why you're doing this and what you're interested in. And tell me your thoughts on how like money is connected to that idea of what your ideal life is like, how, you know, and, and, and as much as it is like, what, what are some of the money goals or financial things you've thought about and your wife's thought about as y'all have kind of tried to create this different lifestyle? Yeah. Yes. So, so we, um, you know, even before this, um, even before like our, our trip, we were just starting to like reevaluate of like, you know, cause it's just very easy to get yourself into like this, to, to go by inertia, right? It's like, oh, I gotta get the next promotion. I gotta like, you know, get a bigger house. I gotta get a newer car. And it's just, you're just following what everybody else is doing. So even before that, we were just starting to like question, like, is this really like the way in which we wanna go? So, um, you know, we did, we did a lot of thinking and, and, and a lot of journaling, a lot of writing and reading and whatnot. And especially during, during my trip, I, I got a chance to do a lot of that stuff. And, you know, one of the, one of the realizations that I came to was, you know, number one, it's like the, the, the material stuff is not necessarily what makes me the happiest. You know, it's like, yeah, sure. It's really nice. So like, I, you know, I have the newest iPhone and I have like a good laptop and headphones or whatever, but, you know, but, but there's a few things that, that I, that I need, but then like, I don't need the fanciest things. So the things that I, that I really found made me very happy were, you know, giving and, and generosity and, uh, and then experiences, you know, experiences and the growth that experiences give you. So, you know, long story short, we ended up deciding that like, you know, the metrics that we were going to measure our life according to and, and, the, and the metrics that we were going to use to determine whether we're successful or not are, you know, two things, freedom, which we defined as freedom of time and location and, you know, the financial independence mm -hmm. to get there and impact you know how how much we're giving back to the world how much we're we're using our brains and our time and our effort and our money to give back to people who truly need it and how you know how big of a, of a ripple we're having in the world you know and, and then those two and those we love so so going back to your question about money you know nowadays we tend to have a very like we, we tend to be a lot more i think conscious and think about exactly or it's like is this purchase is this investment is this you know however we're or we're thinking about this spending you know what every credit card swipe you know mm -hmm. is it increasing our freedom or is it increasing our our, our impact you know and, and and a lot of the times if the answer is no then we won't do it you know uh so to give you an example like right now we have we have one car, you know, we sold, we had two cars at some point, we sold the one because we decided, you know what, what we're going to do is because we're going to be, you know, we want to have this lifestyle, we're going to choose a place to live that's maybe like more, a little bit more urban, a little bit more central. We're going to get rid of one car, use that money to pay off the other one. And now we're, you know, we, we at some point we're like, should we get another one? We're like, well, not really, because it would give us, you know, we would we'd probably be in debt for some sort of some part of it. And then we have like this other thing that we have to like take care of or whatnot. So, you know, long story short, those are some of the, the, the metrics and some of the ways in which we think about money is kind of like, how do we live in accordance to our values and how do we live in accordance to the things that we want to maximize the most out of in our life? I love so. it. Yeah. So money's a good measurement of value and of your values in particular. Like I love, I love that idea of like every time you make a purchase, an investment, whatever, a business, you know, is, is this going to give me more freedom? Is it going to help me make an impact? I, 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 that, it's so binary. It's awesome. I, I love the way you, the way you guys are thinking, and um, it's, it's, it kind of helps for, help simplify things a little bit. You know, has it helped? Because you can apply that in a lot of areas of your life, right? I mean, beyond just your yeah. ordinary purchases, your career decisions, everything. Yeah, and, and I found that you know, and that's not to say that everybody should live that way or that everybody should care about those things. Those are the things that, that I think can make me tick. Mm -hmm. But but I, I would say that like I found it very helpful to just pause and think about like what are my values like what are the things that i truly care about and what are the what are the rules that i'm willing to live uh, against and you know how do i live with integrity which means like how do you live in accordance to who you really are you know mm -hmm. and what you truly believe and, and i think that money is a huge part of that you know and how you spend yeah. your money and how you spend your time is a humongous part of that and i think not that many people oftentimes tend to stop and think about that and and, and i found it incredibly helpful because I make literally daily decisions based on, on those, on those metrics, you know? 
Very good. Yeah, cool. So we're, we're going to talk about real estate and this first deal you got, which is, I want to get into some details of that. Um, but before we, like, as you got into real estate in general, like, so you, you've given us a, a kind of overview of your life and what some of your goals are and what's important to you. Like, you know, why real estate? Like what, what did real estate have and how did it, how, how did you hope it would contribute to what, you know, what you're doing in your life? Yeah. No, so, um, so we, you know, for, for a long time, we, you know, we've been, we've been big savers and we've always tried to like kind of stay out of debt for the most part. And, uh, you know, for, for a decent chunk of our lives, we were earning, you know, pretty good salaries and then just earning, uh, like saving maybe like 30 to 60% of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so for a long time, we just kind of like, I was just like, I don't even know what I'm going to use this for. Like, you know, like we like maxed out our like our emergency fund and, you know, we, we put like, we, we maxed our retirement accounts and all that stuff, but then we just, you know, kept on saving for like goals, you know, whatever that's going to be. So yeah. part of that went into the trip that we talked about earlier, yeah. but then part of it was just like, I was just like, I'm not even sure what I'm going to use this for, but I just know that I want to, I understood the concept that like if, in order to attain financial independence, you have to be able to invest, you have to be able to generate passive income and whatnot. So, so I just, I just created a, a literally there's a savings account in my bank that's just called Freedom Fund. And I was just like, I don't know what this is yet, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a Freedom Fund and I'm gonna have like something that I use in order to retain my own financial freedom. Uh, so, you know, I looked at, we looked at many different models and we looked at many different ways in which like, okay, how do we, how, what are ways in which you can generate passive income? How, what are the ways in which you can, you know, uh, augment your, your, your cash flow, augment your, your net worth. And um, among them was real estate. And that's kind of where we, where we started looking into that. And the more and the more I, the more I read about it, the more I was like, yeah, this makes a ton of sense. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something that, um, you know, it's very concrete. It's something that I can understand. It's something that's, you know, it's as old as humanity itself. So everybody, um, so any, any, you know, people have figured this out along the ages, you know, it's not like right. cryptocurrency where you're like right now <laughs> where it's like a, the wild, completely wild west, you know? Yeah. So I liked a lot of aspects of it. So, um, so yeah, so then uh, 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 what specific aspect of real estate did you? <laughs> well, I, think, I think you answered it. I mean, so like you're interested in the concreteness and, but then also like, you know, going back to money and how money is going to help you do what you're trying to do. Like, was it, was it a yeah. wealth play? Like, Hey, I'm going to invest in real estate to help me grow my wealth because I don't have enough yet. Or is it, were you trying to use it just to have a place to live? Like, I think that's, that might be an interesting aspect. Of yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good question. So, so, you know, for us, the, the, the thought process is in, and you know, it's still to be proven out because we're just, we're just getting started on this aspect of it. But the thought process is, uh, you know, we, we met people like you, for instance, you know, who are like, okay, you're like living in Ecuador for, for a long time. And, you know, you were, you, you had implemented systems and, and processes and teams and things that were put in place so that you would able, be able to free up your time, you know? So that was our kind of like thought process like, right, yeah, that's kind of exactly what we want. You know, we want to be able to have that time and be able to be in Ecuador and or name the country, right? Mm -hmm. And still be able to earn money and still be able to, to uh, you know, kind of like have a, to, to, to attain our financial goals, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it seemed like something that is easy, not easy. It's something that's something that's relatively simple, you know, not easy, right. but simple yeah. to implement and to, you know, follow the steps in order to in order to get there so to me real estate made a lot of sense from that perspective and uh Got it. I, i'm still learning a ton <laughs> I'm still like, I'm like, now how do i do this <laughs> and that's that's uh, why you're that's why you're here because I, I love it because you're you're in the trenches like you're sitting right there in your background is like is the story yeah, the you're, empty house like this is like <laughs> an empty shelf over there <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean you're, you're living it so I, I just i just think it's awesome and i just i, I applaud you and applaud everybody and who's, who's doing this course and is going through it, but you're, you're just taking action. I just, I, that's really what it's all about. And sometimes that action is uncertain, you know, and you don't have all the answers and you're honest about that. And, um, but you know, we all have to kind of, we have to take some steps forward and some conservative, you know, measured steps, but you've, you've done that. And so let's, let's talk about this step you've taken. Um, you know, I, I do want to get into some of the strategies and some of the things we went through in the course some of the, um, the questions we, we thought about, um, but maybe we can start Rolando on, let's start from the end. Like, tell me about 
and where you are, like what this house is, yeah, maybe just some just kind of rough, rough details. Like what, what type of house is it? I think it's a duplex, you know, where it is, where you are in the country and kind of give us some background on that. Sure. So I'm in the, in the greater Cincinnati area. So this is, uh, and I'm actually on the Kentucky side. So people who are not from around here, like, you know, Cincinnati is like on the border between Ohio and Kentucky. So I'm like, you know, five minutes away from Ohio, but I'm in Kentucky right now. Okay. Um, so this is, um, so, so this is actually a smaller town about five or 10 minutes from downtown Cincinnati. So you just cross the river and then you're there. The reason why we liked it is, uh, yeah, so this is a, a, it's a two unit. So it's a, you know, we're on the top floor right now. And then there's, a, there's another unit at the bottom. We actually have two floors here. So we, we have a third floor that we're still figuring out. Like we might, there's way too much space for us. So we might like Airbnb it or something. Nice. Um, so that, that hopefully will generate a little bit more income. But um, it's, so it's three floors. It's a, it's a large house. It's an old house. It's like an 1880s house. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's actually really, really, you know, well kept. And you can see a little bit of, uh, about it here, but you know, it's, it's really well kept up. Uh, a lot of the, uh, utilities are new. A lot of the, you know, HVAC systems and all that stuff is new. So the previous tenants, previous owners actually, you know, had it in pretty good condition, which is one of the things that we liked about it. Yeah. Uh, we initially, you know, when, when we started looking, we initially started looking at like, um, just like complete fixer uppers, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, maybe we might be like drinking out of a fire hose here. <laughs> we can out more, more than we can choose. So we just decided to go with something that still needs some fixes, still needs some repairs. And I've actually been on the phone with, you know, electricians and HVAC people and a couple of uh, handymen uh, over the past couple of days. But um, uh, that, that's still, that's still, you know, part of the, um, that's still not something that we've, that we've, uh, it's not a lot that it's not, it's not taking a lot of attention from it. But anyway, um, another thing about the house that we liked is that it's, it has a lot of that, like, and I think you, you, you specifically pointed this out in the course, which I liked a lot, which is the idea of like romance, you know? <laughs> so it's a cool house. It's like right near um, one of the better schools, I think. And like the, this whole like area, the whole Midwest, it's like a right, right near a good school. Um, it's across the street. So right now I'm actually looking at a coffee shop. There's a, a brand new brewery over here and there's a distillery, you know, like a couple blocks from there, like a bourbon distillery. And if anybody's familiar with Kentucky, it's like the, the, the bourbon trail is a big thing to do. And that's actually becoming a part of the bourbon trail right next door is an art gallery. And there's a few like different residences and there's like some really nice old houses and there's like a park a couple blocks that way. So it's really cool because it's just like, a, it's, it's a really nice main street. That's why I closed the window, which is because it was loud. <laughs> the I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so, so it's, it's a really, it's a really cool um, area. It's developing a lot, but it's also not to the point where like prices are getting really ridiculous. So anyway, that was, th those are some of the basics of the, of the property. Anything else I missed? No, that that's good. Like uh, those are kind of, I wanted to hit on the location and I wanted to hit it on the house itself. And so just my understanding, the summary is it's, it's a duplex, potentially maybe a, you could get some income of a third source if the third floor. So this is a classic house hack uh, for those who aren't in the class or just listen to this later, you know, house hacking something that I'm just like preach to everybody I can because it's like just such, such an awesome starting tool if you're going to do your first deal and if you're willing to live in a property that can produce some income. So you guys are house hacking. You, 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 and that was and part of your strategy was looking for something that could generate some extra income, right? That was kind of a core part of what you looked for. Yeah, something, I mean, we wanted to do, we wanted this to be, you know, our first deal. And considering the fact that we were renting before, you know, this, like to your point, house hacking is just something that, I, I mean, I personally think I should have started earlier just because mm -hmm. like, yeah, it makes so much sense. If you, I mean, if you can pull it off and you can do it right. And if you, you know, run the numbers right. And if you get the right tenants and whatnot, it's something that makes a ton of sense just financially. Um, but, you know, and we also like this house because it gave us options, you know? So one of the cool things is that we can actually, the bottom floor can even be zoned commercial. So then we can uh -huh. take the bottom floor and make it either residential or commercial. We can even take the bottom floor and split it in half and have like a studio in the back and then like an office in the front. Wow. And then we yeah. have a top floor, which we can do anything with, like from storage to whatever. So, so it, it gave it, it gave us options, you know, it's like, so if we fail at something, <laughs> you know, we'll try to do something else yeah. with it. Um, so, so I think, I think that was a, that was a cool aspect of it. 
I love that. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm particularly drawn to, to areas like that with mixed use and close to parks and walkability. I'm just intrigued by that concept. You know, it's not for everybody. Some people like the more, you know, suburban feel. And, and so, but that's what's cool about real estate, right? I mean, you're, you're moving into a property and you can sort of decide the flavor of, of what you want and, and house hacking in particular, like you guys like, picked this because it was something that matched your lifestyle that you're interested in. And it's also a good investment. Like we hope, you know, it's, it's all, you always have to kind of go forward and make it work, but um, talk to me about numbers. So like, uh, you know, we all in, in the course, we get into numbers and we can kind of keep it simple, but like, you know, purchase price and then potential rent for those different units, just so we can sort of kind of look at that big picture of the of investment qualities. Sure. 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 Yeah. So, um, so it was actually listed, listed initially at 175. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we, we noticed that like their previous offer had fall had fallen through due to like, I think the, the buyer had some financing issues. Um, we met with the, we actually found it cause we were, so we, we initially we, we were getting listings from the real estate agents, but this one didn't come through because this was above our budget. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was actually walking around, uh, around this area actually walking like walking, walking for, for dollars. dollars all right good yeah. and uh, and then i saw that this one was for sale so i gave i gave the agent a call we scheduled us like a, an appointment for like a sunday this was a saturday like on the sunday that agent got us got us in um and um yeah so anyway but the long, long story short we found out that the people who were selling it uh you know we're, we're we're interested in selling it because they were trying to purchase a different property that like one of their uh, i think grandparents had left up or something so that's that was the reason why they were selling it initially mm-hmm. so long story short to say all, all to say like you know they were motivated sellers we you know we liked the house a lot so long story short we negotiated uh under so we ended up paying about 157 for the for the property um both units were would rent for about 1800 in total so the bottom unit would be, I think, was renting for 800 and this one was renting for 1000 okay. So, um, yeah, so, you know, we kind of looked at the numbers and that, that ended up working out for us. Um, I think we're making some fixes to the bottom unit right now where we might be able to bump up the rent a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, any other numbers that would be of interest? No, no, that's good. And just for people who are just like learning about evaluating real estate, one of the, and I'm not sure if you guys use this, but, you know, one of the things we always talk about is a simple analysis doing the 1% rule when you're looking at rental properties. And so if we did the 1% rule on your property, we would say, okay, there's $1,800 in in rent that's been proven on this property. And and if you use the 1% rule, you wouldn't want to have any more than 100 times that monthly rent um, invested. So it's $180,000 all in would be, you know, 1800 would be 1% of 180,000. So you, you guys did better than the 1% rule, which is awesome. Um, Cause they give you some, you have some room if you need to you know, put some more money into it and still have it be a good cash flow. But I imagine you know, there's, there's more details in the analysis, financial analysis, but for you guys living somewhere, like what, how will this compare if you have $800 coming in from downstairs, you know, what, what will the net look like compared to you renting? Like when you, where you should move from, have you thought about that at all? Yeah, yeah, we have. So, so, you know, we were paying like almost 1100 for rent in the other, in the other place where we were, you know, uh, and it just, um, and in this case, if we do, you know, rent it out for say around 800, uh, we would be including all expenses, you know, so like the mortgage was, is a lot less than that. So the, so the rent pays for the mortgage and insurance and then some, um, so then, but once you actually start including like all the other expenses for the house maintenance and the taxes and whatnot, long story short, at the end of the month, we'll be paying somewhere around three to four hundred dollars. So for spending the eleven hundred versus the three or three or four hundred dollars, like yeah, makes you know Amazing. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you're buying <laughs> that, that's including buying the place, paying down your loan a little bit, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. So that, that house hacking one hundred and one, you're getting to live like eleven hundred bucks was your previous rent here all in including maintenance expenses taxes insurance all of that about three or four hundred bucks a month and so yeah i mean this this is in so in the short run you've freed up capital and you've made yourself going back to your criteria am i increasing my freedom am i increasing my ability to make an impact like i would say all right yeah that's that's less that's more money that you can invest it's less time that you, you have to work if you want to take a break and kind of take it easy you don't have to work as hard to pay for your housing bill Right. So, I mean, I don't know, seems to check the list for me, at least from what I've heard. 
Yeah, and the, and the other thing that I'll, I'll just mention just to tie back to, to real estate start school, you know, we, we because one of the things that you suggested that I liked a lot was like, you know, pick your metrics and pick how you're going to like, how are you going to evaluate these things? And definitely the 1% rule was one of them. Um, cash flow was, was another one for us, you know, just because mm -hmm. we, that, that's the ultimate goal is to be able to generate cash flow. So, you know, when we looked at everything, we know, you, once you include, you know, repairs and, um, and like how much we're going to be able to rent it for and, and how many expenses we're actually going to have, we figured that our cash flow was going to end up being about, we're going to end up, we were going to end up having a, between like a nine to 13% cash on cash ROI, you know, annual mm -hmm. ROI, which was kind of like a, a key metric that we were looking at because mm -hmm. we want to be able to generate some, some, some cash flow income. And if we eventually do move out of here, whether we want to, you know, house act somewhere else or, or whatever, uh, then it, it would work out pretty well, you know. Love it. Yeah. So you, you had a, it met the 1% rule, but when you dig in and look at the bottom line, which helps you actually have freedom is if I moved out of this place and rented it out and had a mortgage and I had to pay all my expenses, like what kind of cash return would I get? How much cash is it going to generate between nine and 12%? Yeah, that's a super solid. And, and the, the other thing I'll add, I mean, we, we don't have to have this, this metric isn't usually my first criteria. Like I like the criteria you're using of cash flow. But if you buy in a good location, which we go back to the location criteria you looked at earlier, it's in an area that's very convenient to a major economic center in Cincinnati. Um, it's in an area that's got historic flavor. I, mean, I assume y'all looked at kind of what was, in, what, you know, what the town and city is investing in parks and roads. And so maybe there's some up and coming kind of things. So you, your hope is that this is a long-term investment if you want it to be. And then 10, 20 years from now, it's possible things could be a lot better. Like $1,800 might not be the rent anymore. It might be 2,500 and the value of the property could keep going up too. So it's got a, real estate's interesting in that way that in a house hack in particular, you've got these kind of core first level, you know, benefits. And then it's got a lot of secondary tertiary kind of benefits as you, as you hold it over time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think I, I like that too a lot. And, and that goes back to the idea that we like that because it has options and it has like, it has potential, but we just want to, and I, I think you point this out too in the, in the course, which I like was in the idea that, you know, it's, you just got to be careful with not speculating. Right. So we want to make sure that it makes sense as a deal right now. Right. And not that like, Oh, this is going to make sense if it appreciates by, you know, 25% or whatever. Like we wanted to make sure that, that, that it made sense right now. And it, and it seems to be, and anything else that you gain from the area developing and whatnot is, is all up, you know, it's, it's just a, a plus, you know. For sure. No doubt. Well, um, so we know, we kind of know a little bit more about your deal specifically. It's a duplex, potentially more income, kind of got the numbers, you know, 156,000 purchase. Plus you mentioned earlier that there might be some other repairs. So maybe you have 160 or 165 in the 160s invested and in total rent right now downstairs is 800 bucks. Um, so let's talk about like kind of backing up. Cause I know when people are first starting and getting their first deal, my experience has been, there's some big hurdles either mentally or practically that people have. And a couple of the ones that come up for me all the time are the money. So getting the money to buy the deal and then just finding a deal. And particularly as the market heats up, how do I even find it? And so would you mind talking about, um, you can just kind of take them one at a time, but like, let's talk about the money and let's also talk about your process that you went through from start to finish of like getting it going so you could actually find this property. Sure. 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 Uh, yeah. So, so the money part, you know, we, we've talked about a little bit already and it's just the fact that, um, you know, we, we, we have been for a long time, very high savers, uh, very low spenders, you know, we, as our, as our careers progressed and as we started, you know, earning more money, we, we just try to be a lot more careful about like, all right, and that's not increase our lifestyle necessarily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. so I basically, you know, once I got to a certain level of income, I was just like, I'm just going to stay here when it comes to like my expenses, you know, and I just kept earning more and, and I left my expenses at a, at a comfortable level because I realized, you know, I, I don't really need a ton more. Um, and, and, you know, and, and there are a lot of books, like one of the books that I liked about that was it's called um, I Will Teach You to Be Rich. Mm -hmm. which is a really good book. So that, that one was just kind of like, it's, it's about being very conscious about your spending and whatnot. But anyway, so yeah, that, that was essentially it from a money perspective. Like we, we, we ended up saving a lot. We knew that we wanted to invest into something that, 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 that helped us grow. Uh, real estate was one part of that equation. And we, we did that. Then we um, ended up getting a, a mortgage in order to pay for it. So, you know, we, 
nothing, you know, nothing crazy, a 30 year fixed conventional mortgage. Uh, uh, that's how we ended up financing a good chunk of it. Mm -hmm. um, we still have some reserves that we're going to, you know, we have some reserves that we're going to put towards fixes. And then, you know, because it's an old house, we want to make sure that there's some money mm -hmm. set up for it to just yes. in case it breaks down. Yes. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's the money part. What, uh, any other aspects of that? that would well, be I mean, and I remember when we, you and I had a conversation once um, when we did our one-on-one -on -one call about just kind of getting in a debt period. I think, was that not a hurdle for you guys to, like actually borrowing the money and being comfortable with the fact that you're actually going to have debt against something because debts it can be scary. You can feel risky. So how did y'all deal with that kind of mental hurdle? For, for sure. For sure. <laughs> That's a good point. So yeah, because of the same thing, we've, we've been very debt diverse most of our lives and, and uh, yeah. And it was just one of those things where like, we're just going to pay for the whole thing in cash and we're just going to, you know, just get the house and then call it a day, you know? Yeah. But, and it's funny, you know, I actually read rich dad, poor dad a long time ago. Mm -hmm. and I've been rereading it every now and then. Like I just kind of reread, well, I've read it like maybe twice and I've gotten a couple of the other rich dad books and whatnot. <laughs> but it's just funny. Cause like for, sometimes you read something and it's just, you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But it doesn't really click in your brain. And mm -hmm. one of those things for me was the whole idea of leverage, you know, and, and, and how like leverage is really, if, if, if you're going to, you know, save and then, put cash into something and then save and put cash into something. It's, it's, a, it's a viable path to wealth, mm -hmm. but it's going to take a long time, most likely, you know, it, assuming, you know, all things being equal. Uh, so this idea of leverage to me was just like for one day, I think it was, it was, you know, in big part talk, uh, taking your course and reading a lot of books and looking at what other people were doing in, in, in real estate too. And it was just one of those things where we're like, you know, it, yeah, it makes sense. Like that's what we should do. You know, in any case, like if anything goes wrong with the, with the house mm -hmm. and we have to sell it or whatever, you know, we'll sell it, we'll get rid of the debt, you know, <laughs> like it's all possible. But that, but that idea of leverage was just one thing where we just kind of like had to sit down and go like, all right, you know, worst that happens is we can get rid of it. You know, we can get rid of the, the, the debt. Maybe we'll lose some money, but, but uh, this will help us, you know, multiply our efforts because we're using other people's money. You know, as right. I, I think that's a rich debt term too. Yes. But you're using other people's money in order to, you know, expand and multiply your efforts rather than have, rather than just have like your own efforts and your own money. Right. You know, uh, you can say the same for, for hiring people to help you rather than doing everything yourself. That's the leverage of people, you know, and there's mm -hmm. the leverage of knowledge. But the idea of like being able to use other people's money as a lever, right, to help like, you know, give yeah. you extra strength, I think for some reason, eventually it just kind of clicked in our heads and we're like, okay, that's how we should do it. You know, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, just, yeah. let's just follow that path for now. Um, and, and, and it's all a big learning experience, but, but, but so far it's worked out well. Like it, it, now, now, fortunately we went that route because that frees up the other part of the cash that we wanted to spend to maybe go and get another you know, maybe a second or a third property that, you know, we might be able to leverage as well somehow mm -hmm. and then continue to expand that way, you know? So it just, it just multiplies our efforts. So I think that, that, that multiplication thing was the mm -hmm. mental shift maybe that, that allowed us to do that. Yeah. That's so good. I, I love to hear your thought process because it's, it's a cost benefit analysis, right? And you know, debt, debt is not the only thing we have to run that on. I mean, we have to hire people and pay people to do things. And so with any form of leverage, we're always having to look at is it worth the investment is it worth the cost is it and, and then also like, I love how you thought about worst case scenario like I, I do that myself as well you know and I, it's actually the first thing I think about when I do a deal like it, I always think about profit and upside but I've got I really gotten in the mental habit of saying like what's the what, I'm gonna use my imagination here and I might have to get other people like I have some people in my life who are very grumpy on everything and so they're really good at having an imagination about what could happen and go wrong <laughs> and so like I'll, I'll call my dad <laughs> you like dad what could go wrong with this and I'll call my brother who's an attorney <laughs> I'll say hey Andrew what can go wrong with this and so like I have my wrong people and I, and I, I it's like a devil's advocate it's like a wrong advocate and a right advocate you know and and so like, if I can handle like those worst case scenarios and I can think about them or I'll have a plan or if it's reasonable that I could succeed with those worst case scenarios, like you could sell your property, you could lose money, but just sell it and unload it. Then I move forward. Like that's, that's my decision matrix. And it sounds like you guys too, you know, you had that risk. You don't want to take a risk that's going to undo all this hard work you've made up to this point. You don't want to slide down the mountain, so to speak. 
And so like, yeah, you just protect your downside. And I think that's a really good gauge. Like a lot of, a lot of people are asking me lately, like, Hey, it's 2018. We're late in the cycle of real estate. Things are going up. Is this bubble going to burst? And my first answer is I have no clue. Like, I think we're going to have another recession at some point. There's no doubt about that, but like, when's it going to happen? How's that going to happen? To me, that's like trying to predict it's not the right answer. The right answer is being prepared for all possible scenarios at all time. And it's like being flexible. Like I think about athletics, you know, like the best athletes are really low center of gravity, flexible. They can move in any different direction, like a martial artist or something. And that's, that's how real estate, we ought to be nimble. And when people get in trouble, like the investors I've seen who've gotten in trouble is they got too top heavy and they, they went too far in one path where they couldn't undo it. You know, and it's like, that's, that's where it's really hard to come back to. And leverage can do that. You know, you can borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow. That's why I'm always sort of hesitant when I got, I'm on bigger pockets a lot. And there's so many different opinions on there. And there's some that are like, let's take it to the moon, you know, 1000 units, leverage, 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 leverage. And like, I'm always, I'm trying to be like the foil <laughs> to some of that. Like, well, wait, wait a minute, maybe, maybe let's find this place called enough and kind of figure it out. And um, obviously you, you guys have that attitude of, of you're not taking crazy risks, but you're also taking advantage of some opportunities because right now, like I love how you guys have a certain amount of capital, you're saving more, but you know, you could take this one piece of capital and get a couple properties now and you can always go back and pay those off. Like you could get to a plateau after those two or three properties and say, all right, let's take a break. Let's pay these things off or let's just keep them where they are, make cash flow, and then take another year off. <laughs> you know, that which probably mm -hmm. I could imagine that being in your future. So I, I like I like how you all have done it. And I like hearing your perspective of how you thought about it and overcame that sort of mental hurdle. Yeah, and and, and if I can if I can build on that, I think I think that's that's uh that's really interesting that you say that the, the cap the downside piece. I I remember reading somewhere that like Richard Branson, for instance, like the guy from Virgin, that he like always thinks about it the same way. So he says like, oh, entrepreneurs, you know, are always thought of being like risk takers, but in right. reality, they're risk avoiders. You know, <laughs> like what he so he when he started Virgin Airlines he didn't buy the planes. He said, oh, I'm going to lease them. And if it doesn't work out, then I can return the planes, you right. know? So, <laughs> um, and, and the other, the other comment I was going to make there is, is there's a really helpful exercise that just because, uh, since we're talking about like fear and, and thinking about how you can think about worst case scenarios, one thing that I really liked was, um, in the book, the four hour work week, mm -hmm. uh, Tim Ferriss talks about this thing called fear setting. And it's this idea that, uh, you know, a lot of the times, and, and I and actually did this for the real estate thing, and I, and I did it when, before we traveled and, and we quit our jobs and all that stuff. Like, uh, we I've done it because it works. Yeah. Um, but it was it was just like write down your fears, you know, and list them, and 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 you know, here's my fear, and here's what I'm afraid is going to happen in the worst case scenario. And then next to that, you you write what's the chance that that's actually going to happen? What's the percentage? Is it a hundred percent chance? Then you know, that's pretty bad. Or is it, you know, in most of the cases you'll find that it's actually a way smaller chance than you actually realize it is. Mm -hmm. And then next to that, right. What would you do if you wanted to revert that? Like if you wanted to go back to square one and to where you are right now, what would you do in order to revert that? And doing this exercise is just kind of like what makes helps you realize one, most of the fears that I have are not that likely to happen. And two, if they were to happen, I can always do this and this and this in order to go back where I'm right now and not, you know, nothing would have happened or the worst case is like, I lost some money, you know, but you like right. lost a certain, a, a certain bottom out. And then and at, at the end, it just helps to say like, what is the cost of inaction? Like, what is the cost for my net worth? What is the cost for my emotional well-being? What is the cost for my mental well-being that I, if I do nothing? Right. Uh, and then what is the benefit of action? If I actually do this, what would happen? You know, what in my wildest dreams, what would, what would work out? And, and I think that going through those exercises is incredibly mentally liberating, you know, and, and it just, you know, going back to the whole money question, like that was kind of how we thought about it too. It's just like, all right, well, a lot of these things could happen. And by the way, this house, as we were talking about before, this house gives us the option that if one strategy doesn't work, we can try a different one. You know, we can try to make the bottom commercial. We can try to make the top Airbnb or whatever. <laughs> we might yeah. be able to have a little bit of room to play around with. I love it. Yeah, that 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 fear setting exercise. I remember that when I re first read that book as well. And such such a helpful concept. You know, of getting in your own head. You know, we we, we usually get in our own way. So that's that's a really good. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so yeah. I, I so we I want to I want to jump into one last thing about sort of the processes as we go through in real estate start school, which one of the main modules, which is how do we find deals and generate leads and find these properties. And then, 
um, for the other people who are on the call with us, like start thinking of some questions you have. I'd love to get your, because I don't want to just, just be me asking. We're going to go to you in a second um, and either unmute it or you can send a, send a message here. Um, but so talk to me about like when you start, you got a strategy, you've got some money saved, you've got a general location you want, you know, you want to buy in. Um, then how did you go about starting to get generate leads and find properties that could be potential? And how many did you have to go through before you actually got to this one? Yeah. So, so um, I think one of the things that stuck with me from, from the real estate, from learning about real estate is that you have to kiss a lot of frogs. <laughs> you know? So, so for me, as, as soon as I could, I just started going and looking at houses. Like, I, you know, I would either walk around and, and, and call a number that I saw like a for sale sign and go look at that house. And I'd also sign up with a couple of different real estate agents and had them, you know, send me uh, multi uh, family properties with a certain uh, range in a certain area. Um, and yeah, and it was, it was incredibly helpful. You know, it was, it was very, very helpful because it's, you know, one thing, one thing that I think stood out to me was like, when I first saw them, I was like, Oh, this is not that bad. You know, that was kind of cool. And then you start seeing more and more and you're like, Oh man, that first one was like really bad. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> contrast, contrast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you start get you start getting like a little bit more educated and there's, you know, there's nothing that substitutes the experience and there's nothing that just kind of that, that gets, you can learn as much as you possibly can. You can watch as many YouTube videos and take as many courses and read as many books, but until you're mm. there doing it, it's right. not going to really stick in your brain. So for me, it was just a matter of like, so I probably looked at, I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say probably 40 places, 30 something places mm. uh, before this one. Um, uh, yeah. And it was, it was just a matter of like, you know, I probably would look at maybe two or three places uh, a day and some days and, and some weeks I just wouldn't. But, um, but yeah, I think that, that, that helped me kind of get an understanding. And, and that's one of the reasons why when we came here and we saw that a lot of the big things had been done, you know, like it has pretty new floors, it has new appliances, it has like, um, you know, there's, there's some, like the, 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 some parts of the bathroom seem to be new. So stuff like that, that we saw, we're like, oh, you know, this is actually something that other houses don't have. And if I were to do myself, not only do I not have any clue how to do it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like it's probably going to be a little bit more expensive or maybe if I do save money, then it's going to be a lot more time consuming. And we want to start on this, on this now. One thing that you said when we had our one-on-one -on -one that, that it kind of stuck with me and I liked a lot, which was, you know, your first deal doesn't have to be a home run. It has to be a good deal. And it's something that hopefully you don't lose money on, but it doesn't have to be a home run. For us, it was actually made a total ton of sense just because we were renting and going from renting yeah. to house hacking. It almost is a house, a home run, you know, yeah. but at the same time, if it, if it does nothing but make us a little bit of money, you know, it's good. But, but the same, at the same time, I feel like I've learned so much through this month and a half long process that uh you know from when we first put the offer that it's it's just been like a huge a huge learning experience and i would be so you know i'm so grateful that i went through it because yep. now like and, and so like we, we also have like an e-commerce business for instance and like we every single step that we started to do that that was a whole huge learning experience and now i can do it with like with my eyes closed you know <laughs> like it's the same idea with real estate i i think you know i'm sure there's always learning and there's this more expanding but but we're, we're uh going through this process has been a, has been a huge uh, learning curve yeah well i mean th those lessons to me are so key that i just don't want to highlight them like the, the one you said about looking kissing some frogs you know like um <laughs> I, I think that's the repeated message I, I try to give people and i'm really glad you're demonstrating it is that you, you have got to look at a lot of properties early especially early on like for exactly the reasons you mentioned like you, you really don't know what you're looking at when you are just looking on zillow from a distance um, pictures like you, you have to get out there and kind of almost like go through the exercises of like, all right, well, what if we offered on this? What would happen? Like, how would we do this? What would, who would we have to hire? What would it be like to live here? What would it be like to own here? And so like you went through that exercise over and it's, it's really, there's like brain chemistry there. Like you're the patterns in your brain, the um, you know, don't, you can't learn something until you just do it and do it and do it. It's like riding a bike. It's like learning any foreign language, right? You know, it's, it's, it's just, right. you've got to use that, that, that brain. And, and so that if that one exercise that you did of just going and looking at and kissing 40 frogs is, is such a critical thing. But, you know, a lot of us in part of big part of real estate start school, is just like removing some of those, barriers that most of us have mentally knowledge wise 
just to get you out there to get the real education. Like you, you got the real education by doing this deal, by making offers that we can't, that I can't get you like online and can't do it anywhere else. So um, that's, that's really cool to hear that. And the, just going specifically back to the way you got your leads, like, um, can you tell us, uh, you know, how, how you got the prop 40 properties to look at? Yeah. So it was a mix. It was a mix. I would say about 60 to 70% of them were through an agent. So through agents. So, you know, to find an agent, uh, I did two things. I, I, I talked to a friend who, who was, who recently got his first property as well mm -hmm. and they recommend an agent. And then I actually, also, what I did was, and I'm, and I'm doing this right now too, and this is a huge underestimated thing in my opinion, is Facebook groups. So like Facebook groups, there's groups for anything. And there, so like what I did was I, was, I went and I signed up for all the Facebook groups for all these neighborhoods that I'm looking mm -hmm. at. So there's like, so there's Newport over there on the, on the east side, there's Covington, then there's Ludlow where I'm right now. There's all these Facebook groups and it's just like neighbors, just the people who live there. Mm. And I literally just wrote a message and I was like, Hey, I'm looking for properties around this area. Does anybody, wow. you know, would anybody be willing to, to, is anybody, does anybody know anybody who's selling or would anybody be willing to, 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 to send stuff, you know, send property. And I got a couple of leads from there. So I went to check out those. And then one guy from one of the groups said, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. Would you mind, you know, would you be willing to, if I send you some stuff, he would sign up. And so I started getting stuff from him via email and I started to look at that. So, so Facebook groups, but I'm doing that right now because so I went and like, I went into the Ludlow thing and I was like, Hey, does anybody know handyman people who can fix mm -hmm. stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And so yesterday and two days ago i had people from the area who are who came here and they're recommended by other people in the area to to come and do that so facebook groups are, are huge right now i'm yeah. actually also on like yard sales because we have like a couple <laughs> like furniture stuff that we need to fill so anyway so yeah. yard sale facebook groups, facebook groups are, are a good uh are a good tool that i've been using a lot um then the other piece that so 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 agents uh facebook groups and then um the other way was like just driving for dollars you know so so uh during my lunch break or something or or in the morning or in the evening something if i wanted to, to clear out my head i would go for like a bike ride or i would drive around a little bit around the neighborhoods and go to some of the more like you know not as uh not, not as uh, not as famous streets i guess and would try to just find houses around there and um that um allowed me to, you know, find some stuff that probably was not necessarily too, uh, too, too in the market yet. So, so that was, a uh, that was another way. So just driving for dollars. Which is actually how you, found, I mean, this one was listed by an agent, but <clears throat> you found it by yes. walking around and saw the sign and said, Ooh, that's interesting. Let me call that person. And, and I want to mention that too, because you made the habit of calling. Like, I, I don't know how many people like, and I understand it. Like you get nervous, like, because if you call somebody, that means you feel like you got to do something and you actually have to talk to them and make an offer potentially. But you know, that habit, that another you know, brain kind of habit is to just make, to call them, like get, practice just calling the realtor. There's no harm there. There's not going to hurt anybody. Ask questions. And so you did that. You just call, saw a sign. It was in your location. It was available and you called. And if you get, if we all get in the habit of doing that, of just calling both like listed signs by realtors, call for rent, by uh, owner signs, call yard sale signs, call, you know, everything, like anybody you can talk to in your neighborhood. And I, I love the Facebook group. Like that's such a, it's an aha for me. Like I, I think Facebook groups are kind of on level now for me up there with driving for dollars. Like I always recommend walking and driving for dollars as an easy, free way to get started. But like social media, I mean, gosh, everybody it's, it's even better than door knocking or going out, like talking to neighbors because, people are on there and they're going to read it and you're not having to go up to their house and, and talk to them there. Although I like that too. Um, yeah, Facebook groups are awesome. So thanks for sharing that, that tip. Yeah. And, and the, the, just so the one little detail I mentioned about Facebook groups is that they're the people who are there are people who are engaged with their community. So they want people to come into their community, you know? And so if you, and we, you know, we, I try to like put like a nice, a nice message. I was like, Hey, you know, we're a young professional couple trying to look for a, you know, a, a property that we can fix up or whatever, you know, we try to make it so that people yeah. wanted to respond to us and yeah. that they wanted to, yeah. you know, to actually bring us into their neighborhood and they would give us the leads, you know? So, so I think that was very helpful.
No, very good. So I, I just want to say in, in summary, like, congratulations. I'm happy for you for y'all and the fact that you, you've done this and you've seen it through. I know there's a lot, there's gonna be some challenges ahead of you. You know, you're going to deal with the contractors, you're going to deal with owning a home and there's always excitement <laughs> that, that goes along with that. Sometimes good excitement, sometimes not so good. Um, but hey, you've, you've, you've done it. You can take a breath and you can, what a, what a lot of lessons and what, a, what progress you, you've made. So just want to say that publicly because I'm really excited for you. Thank you very much, Jan. And I, I, wanna, I do want to thank you for also for all the lessons and for the for the you know the the, the, co the course and everything you've done has been really awesome and really instrumental in us getting this. And and also by the way, everybody on the on the call too. You know, I, I know I posted probably a few different messages on the on the Facebook group, the, the real estate circle, and and everybody was so supportive and so helpful there too. So I want to I want to thank you guys for that as well. Awesome. Thanks. Well, cool. Speaking of that, so let's let's transition. I know we still have a few people on the call. Uh, Levi and Michael and Christy are here. I see for sure. Um, so I'm going to unmute you guys, or if you don't want to talk, you can chat as well. Um, you have any questions or thoughts that you want to you chime in to ask Rolando? I do. Go, okay, go ahead, Christy. Hey, Rolando. I think you're doing great. I think it was awesome with like energy and then willingness to like just learn and understand that this is not going to be a smooth sailing and you are keep going at it, which is, I think it's very, very cool because mm -hmm. Um, for me, that was my challenge when I was having my first property. It was just like, hey, I didn't realize. I mean, like, I think the first AC that I got broke down, and I was like so sad just because I was thinking like it's three months without rent, and I'm just. <laughs> but now it's like, hey, AC broke down. It happened. Well, let's just. <laughs> what is my saving going to do? But anyway, but what are you looking? I mean, like, are you just going to focus on this one house now, and then, or are you still looking for more? We, we're probably going to, hopefully in the next six months or so, going to try to expand a little bit more. You know, we, we definitely want to get this house figured out, you know, like figure out like any fixes, any, you know, uh, we want to figure out what the heck to do with the third floor. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be on like this is the back burner, but we want to figure, it's just like, it's, it's I mean, the, the house is all, all three floors are the same size and it's just, it's a lot, it's a, each floor is about a thousand square feet. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a pretty big, um, big, 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 big space. So we got to figure that out. But yeah, hopefully in the next six months or so, we're going to try to look for something else. Hopefully something similar. One, one thing that we liked about this house is that something, it's something that um, I could identify with, you know, I, I, the more I looked at properties and this is, goes back to the idea of like there's a lot of frogs, but like the more I looked at properties, the more I was like, I should really pick something that I would like because I know that how to sell it to people like me you know uh because i just like i don't know how i would how i would find the right renter for you know a property that was way too much more expensive or way too much cheaper you know so i kind of want to find ideally people like me like a professional somebody like in that in that age range uh and and, and that's just kind of like the kind of stuff that i'm going to be looking over in six months or so yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool but um i was gonna say i was um i was browsing netflix i don't know if you have netflix but um they have a show called stay here and they break down the how you decorate your airbnb and what the business of it hmm. and i thought it was just super super cool and especially like now you're in the beginning of it and just thinking like how you can renovate the third floor to make more income i think it's just super super cool i'm mean, like you might get a few ideas for that. yeah that's a really good <laughs> you know it's you know it's really funny you bring that up because i actually auditioned for that show Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I, I i i so i i spoke at the airbnb conference a couple of years ago and uh and and they they reached so the the producers of that show reached out to me and were like Hey, we saw you had this like video and we saw you at the Airbnb conference and you know stuff about Airbnbs and uh, would you, you know, would you be willing to audition for this thing? So I like did like a video audition for the show. And if you look at the guy that's on the show, he kind of looks like an older version of me. <laughs> <laughs> so they ended up going with somebody else because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> like, right. But it was really funny because it literally just came out. It's like, oh my God, that's the thing that I did. You know? like, that's hilarious. Weird. <laughs> I haven't looked at it, so I appreciate the, appreciate the, uh, the, the reco. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I've been doing Airbnb for a whole year now, and I, I truly, tr I'm like, I enjoyed it, and I think with your personality, I think you might be a match, too. I mean, like, I, I can see a lot of the stuff that you are saying, kind of like, oh, yeah, that's, 
that's what you know like i i think about it that way i mean like we both kind of like immigrant for the United States and trying to get a nine to five and trying to get something different and just want to have independence. And I, th- for me, just the Airbnb part of it is just super fun, just getting to know people. Um, so, but I'm probably not as good as you in marketing. So we might, you might be able to help me. <laughs> well, I, I would love to pick your brain actually. So maybe we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> maybe we can, we can have a, a conversation sometime later because then uh, maybe you can teach me how to do the Airbnb thing. Right. <laughs> I, I, I need I need to learn as well, Christy. So I think we're gonna have a call and I'll pick your brain. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. Okay. Well, I I mean, okay. Sure. I, you know, like this is my challenge, right? I mean, like I do believe a lot of people have their own history or experiences, and they're good at it. And just because you live in it, or you never thought how cool it is to share it with other people, just because I'm like, oh, it's an everyday thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah. What's obvious to you might not be obvious to me for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what I learned, especially with in real estate. It's just, I mean, now that with being an agent too, just kind of like, what do you mean you don't understand this? Like, yeah, you 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 sign a contract saying you pay for the appraisal. That mean you pay for the appraisal. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, just just like little things, I think. But I mean, like, no, I think I think that'd be fun. But yeah. No, but you should audition for being a guest on Stay Here. <laughs> oh, I, I know. Yeah, there you go. So that they can like actually decorate. Yeah, it'll come full circle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, like you this. should go back to the producer. I'm like, <laughs> yes. why not? Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, missed, you missed your opportunity the first time, but you, you're not. Right. You I know, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to nail the audition this time. <laughs> okay, there's a season two. I'm sure yeah. there's a season two. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. My challenge. Know, it's, it's funny. Go ahead. No, I, my challenge when they do that, they were like, oh, it's an experience. And I'm like, I live in suburban Jacksonville. I don't really know what to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what kind of experience that is. But maybe, I don't know, Rolando. I'm like, if you ever want to go to Jacksonville, you know, like I'll host you and you can help me like better. <laughs> there you experience. go. There you go. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in Orlando in a month. <laughs> yeah, we ha- I have two bedrooms. So yeah, we fit both of you. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay, good. Sounds good. That's I, awesome. I'm in. You, you, no, have to be, you, have, you have to be careful with these travel hacking people like us. Like we, you know, people invite me places and then I show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would love to host you any day. And we have a dog too. And you can bring your, your daughters. All right. Awesome. There you go. Now that, that sounds like a good idea for real estate start school. That's in the next iteration is a real estate yeah. start school meetup somewhere. Yeah. Else. Start school uh, camp. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. I like it. I, I, I got to find more houses around here so I can host more people. <laughs> yeah. We're going to bring it. We're going to bring a crowd. So like get the whole Airbnb community, like the Facebook Airbnb Jacksonville Facebook community needs to come together so we can I'll, I'll stay there. <laughs> well, that's kind of fun. By the way, Chad, um, I went to Toledo and met up with Michael. So that was pretty cool. Awesome. You made a a real world connection from real estate start school. That's makes me happy. It it happened. It it can be happening. (laughs) Yay. We we need to, I need to help facilitate facilitate more of that happening. So I'm I'm really glad to hear that. Awesome. Well, well, there any, so I see Michael and Levi, did you guys have any questions for Rolando or any, any thoughts after hearing kind of what he's done? Yeah. 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 Um, Wait, Go ahead, Michael. It's fine. Oh, okay. Can you, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Yep. Okay, cool, cool. Internet's been kind of shaky. Um, cool, yeah. Congratulations, Rolando, on your on your first uh, property. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate all the help throughout. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I guess resonated with me was, um, I guess, your, your mission and, like, your passion about traveling because that's kind of what I'm doing right now. So, like, when, when do you plan to be, like, location free and you know like out there in the world like and like like how long and like and all that when do i plan to do that yeah um yeah so so it's a good question so I, honestly right now <laughs> so so here, here's here, how we're thinking about it was we you know for for better or worse you know we we um we had a, a long period of time you know eight months where we were just traveling full time and just went from country to country to country city to city to city um and lately what we've been doing is just trying to set up our lives as much as possible to just be able to be location dependent right now. So I actually travel probably like once a month 
or so right now. Um, and so, so I have a, a, an online business and I have a freelancing business and my wife's work also allows her to, she's also a consultant and she can also be, uh, can just work from her laptop. So we're both b relatively flexible. So like, you know, a couple of weeks ago we were in Greece and we we're in Guatemala a month ago and, you know, earlier this summer we we're in London. So we just try to, we just try to keep mobile, you know, this, so re our goal is to travel once a month for the foreseeable future or, you know, or, or around that, around the period of time and just try to go somewhere new and exciting as frequently as we can. Uh, the, like doing full-time travel for a really long period of time, it's probably going to be a few years just because, you know, the, the way that we're, that we're thinking about it is kind of like a, a semi-retirement maybe will come. There's this guy called Stefan Sagmeister that I don't know if people have heard. He has a really, a couple of popular TED Talks. Uh, he's a, an Austrian designer um, and I, I love his talks. He's a really like just quirky, odd dude, but I, I love his stuff. But one of his TED Talks is about how he takes seven year sabbaticals. So every seven years he decides to just, he has an, an agency in New York, but his agency, he just closes up shop and he just goes and does something or lives somewhere for a year. And then he says that that year serves to like re-inspire him and re-motivate him and re-energize him for the next seven years, you know? I'm not sure what, if I'm gonna do seven years or three or five or whatever, I'm, I haven't gotten that far yet, but, but I think, you know, it's a, a big thing for me is to enjoy the process and to enjoy like, how can I, like, I'm, 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 I'm not exactly where I want to be, but one of the things that I've discovered for myself is that the happiness is in the challenge and happiness is in that journey and, like, and, and striving to do something more. If, you, if you've gotten there, you'll find that very quickly that becomes old <laughs> and that just gets old. It's like, all right, good. I, I did it. You know, what next? You know, yeah. so, so right now what I'm trying to do is how can I maximize my happiness and the things that make me happy while at the same time striving to to, to do impact and to, and to give back to the world and to work. And uh, so, so that's, you know, going back to your like original question, when am I going to travel? I don't know. I think we are going to do the, the long-term travel probably in a few years, but, but for now, what I'm trying to do is find a good balance of like, well, you know, let's just keep traveling pretty frequently. Uh, let's uh, continue to, you know, let's, let's continue to do as much as we can. We give away a, a, a good chunk of our income to charities that we care about. So that also helps us, uh, uh, you know, meet up some of our impact goals. I'm on the board of this nonprofit. So, you know, I'm trying to like implement things here and there that, that, that help us fulfill those goals without necessarily going like 100% all in, you know, and just like going and, and, and traveling the world forever. Although that was pretty fun. So I'm probably going to do it sometime again. And Rolando, can you, can you plug your um, website? Because I follow your website and social, and I think a lot of other people would be interested in it, just to tell us, because you can keep up with a lot of these ideas and philosophy and your actual travels to, um, along the way. Yeah, yeah. So it's, so it's called Art of Wonderlust. So artofwonderlust.com. Uh, honestly, the website and like our Instagram stuff, we're like, we, 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 uh, it's, it's not super well kept up just in the sense that like, uh, it's an Amazon business. So a lot of this, a lot of the effort goes into, putting stuff on Amazon and we just have a lot of products over there, but uh, we are going to start putting a lot more uh, content and, and updating the website and blogging a lot more in the, in the near future. So, uh, so yeah, definitely. If you, if you want to get in touch with me, that's, that's a good place to do it. Art of wonderlust.com. It's fun. I love, I love following your, yeah. I look on Instagram. I'm like, where, where is Rolando this month? Like <laughs> Guatemala, like this is awesome. So it's fun, fun to follow. over your shoulder. <laughs> I mean, I have to have an Instagram account. Ouch. <laughs> I know. I have to figure that out. <laughs> I'm sure it's not as difficult as real estate, right, Chad? No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting into Instagram as well. It's, it's like, oh, another social media. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah I'm more scared of Instagram than Instagram's being my first property here. <laughs> it's a good platform. It's a good platform. I, I, I like it a lot. It's, it's, uh, it's much better than, in my opinion, much better than Facebook and Twitter, which uh, have sometimes become like rage machines. I feel like people are just ranting about this and that. Uh, Instagram is just a very like friendly, photo-based uh, platform, and, I, and I've, I've enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, good. that's great, um, Rolando. So it looks like, um, I mean, like, you're almost like at financial independence. You're doing like kind of what you want, and you're aligning it with your values. Um, you're volunteering, you, you got to stay streaming them come, you know, you're traveling. That's awesome. 
Thanks. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're still a little bit away in the sense of like, we still have to, our, our ultimate goal is to be able to free up our time. You know, we're still yeah. like, I, I still do a lot of uh, consulting work. My wife does a lot of consulting work. So we're still a, a, a pretty significant chunk of our income still comes from time, you know, hours that we spend doing something, you know, so that's the part that we like, even though we're very location flexible, our time is still a little uh, stronger. So that's that's kind of like the why real estate is, is, is a thing that we really like, why we're working on an e-commerce business and all that stuff is just because it helps us uh, free up our time. So, but I appreciate all the support and, and uh, yeah, definitely, you know, de definitely this is like the, my, my kind of people, you know, <laughs> we're all like in this together we're all trying to get to the same thing. So, so uh, it's, it's awesome that we're all in this together. Sure. Absolutely. Hey Levi, did you have it? You had a comment or a question as well? Yeah, I just, I wanted to know on those 40 properties, what was your minimum criteria for saying, I'll go look at it? And how many properties did you waive on? And uh, there, in more specifically, um, did you did you look at any properties that did not meet the 1% rule? Good question, yeah. Um, yes, I probably did. Uh, honestly, I, I think, so, so to be honest, a lot of the ones that I, that I looked at, I didn't even run the numbers. Like I, I because my, my thought process was just like, I mean, I did want to see like how much it costs and how much it was going for. Um, but I, I, I did like a very couple quick calculations in my head of like, you know, how much, how much would it rent for? What doesn't meet the 1% and what that kind of stuff. But I think for when I looked at those properties, my, my, my main objective was just so like in Harvard Business School, for instance, you know, like not that I went there, but like, I know that in Harvard Business School, like the way, the main way in which they teach people and like the MBAs, you know, is they do case studies, you know, so they go like, here's a real life company situation that people went through in order to, and that this company went through and he was the, he was the manager and he was the, like, here's all the challenges that they had. What would you do? And then you actually go and have to solve that problem. And then you do that and then you, you solve it and then you talk about it and you do that over and over and over and over and over again. And then you actually do it with like a real business. So all that to say, the reason why they do that is because you you learn through experience right and for me that was the way in which i was thinking about it's like oh these are all my case studies you know like these are all like oh, i'm gonna go look at this house okay this is how much here's how much it is this is how much is they're, they're they're charging this is how much i could probably rent for um you know here's the the range of fixes and and you know sure you know slowly but surely i eventually yeah like i, I started to get you kind of start to get to like this intuition and the sixth sense of like okay, this is, you know, this is probably a little bit more rundown than, I, than I'm comfortable with. This one's probably overpriced. This one's probably underpriced. Uh, this is not going to rent well because it's an X. And, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in any of these things. I, I, I don't claim to be. I think I'm probably still a little off in some of them. <laughs> but, but I would say that I'm a lot smarter than I was at the beginning of the summer, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm a lot more, I, have a, I feel like I have a lot better intuition for what these things where these things are and where they, what this should cost. So, so my main goal for those 40 was like, just get, get smart, get, build that intuition up, you know, build that experience so that I can, you know, make better decisions in the future. Um, I, you know, I, it, <laughs> it's funny that you asked the, what was the minimum stuff that I didn't look Cause I literally looked at one that was just like, just a shit. Hole. Like it was like, it was going for like 5,000. It was condemned. It was like, it was a duplex, but it was like, I mean, the, 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 the shape of it was pretty good. I mean, it was like, it's, it's in a decent, it's like next to a really nice street. It's like the really nice street next to that. Um, and, uh, and I went to see it, but it was just like, I was almost afraid to go into the house because it was just like the floor, there were like holes on the floor. I mean, it was just terrible, but it's like, what was your middle? a wall a wall and a roof like that, that was the minimum criteria that I, that I looked at knowing that i was likely not going to go there uh but i but but i wanted to see like what, what would a five thousand dollar house cost you know <laughs> and i went to see that too um and and then i looked at some 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 way way pricier ones so um i think that that just kind of helped me kind of kind of build that and and i think that i ended up in a in a pretty happy medium but <laughs> does, that, does that help answer your question Oh, we can hear you, Levi. We lost your sound, Levi. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Um, yeah, I, I th yeah I, I think it does. The, um, 
I think what I'm getting frustrated with where I am is that everything is at least $100,000 on average over the 1% rule. Um, so um, it's, it's, uh, it's, cha it's challenging. I don't know if I'm like wasting people's time to go look at properties that I know that I'm never, ever going to buy. You're in Colorado? I'm sorry? Colorado? Is that where you're? Uh, Salt Lake City. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah, are they, so, they hundred thousand okay. over the, the over the one percent rule? So, like, if it rented for for two thousand bucks, it would be minimum three hundred thousand dollars for any property you look at. At least, if not three hundred and sixty-five, was yeah. the one I was looking at today. And yeah. are they are they multi-unit properties? Are they all like single mm -hmm. family? Yeah, they're uh, the single families are even more than that. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I would still look at those. Like, I, I think Rolando like hit the nail on the head. Like, um, I think early on you got to say yes more than you say no because we just don't know what we don't know yet and like you know I, mm -hmm. I, you know this class and the, you know, the numbers and you know other markets are kind of feeding you certain numbers that you have to you try to put on a different on your market and maybe they don't fit you know and so but if nothing else like you don't have anything to lose by you, know, you do want to minimize your time of like if you have a real estate agent or something like kind of show their expectations like or set their expectations that look i'm i don't know this is going to work i need to learn can I, can I figure out a way to go on my own during an open house or something else just to minimize like wasting people's time. But I, 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 I hundred percent agree with Rolando that there, there's, there's some value to getting on the ground and talking to people. And it might be like, particularly with the house act Levi, like, you know, I, I like the numbers Rolando got and he, his, his area might be like a more up and coming and kind of things are changing for the positive. If you're in a more established area, you know, it might be that the numbers are not quite as good, but maybe you're just, it's a solid location. And so there, there can be an argument for being a, a little bit above, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's, it, it is a challenge where you are and a challenge in the price range, but if nothing else, like, let's say you look at like 10, 15 of those in that up like $300,000 properties that rent for 2000 and you'll be, and then all of a sudden you shift to another little pocket of an area that's a little bit cheaper or maybe, or just one day a deal comes on the market, you'll recognize that that deal for what it is because you've looked at those properties. Like it's, it's not water over a bridge. It's, it's, it is, there's certainly some value to it, I think for you. Okay. Yeah. And, and right, if, it, if it helps, <laughs> <laughs> no, well, if, if it helps at all, I'm not sure how applicable this is, but, but for instance, you know, as I mentioned, I'm in Kentucky right now. Cincinnati is in Ohio, which is, and that's the, the main metro area. And I actually used to live in downtown Cincinnati and it's, and, it, and it's awesome and I like it, but it's, it's also growing, right? So like the prices of real estate in downtown are like skyrocketing right now as well. And they're going up. So my thought process was too like, well, if I want to find a good deal, probably downtown, like you cannot find the 1% downtown, you know, but I'm five or 10 minutes outside of downtown and that's cool. So now Salt Lake city, I, I know it's probably a bigger thing and, it, and it's 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 more challenging but like you know you might con consider looking at like concentric cities you know that are maybe like 45 minutes away and I'm, sh I'm sure you might have been doing a lot of that stuff but even as you think about like uh if, if you are house hacking and i don't know what your like job or commute situation is or whatever but just uh starting to look at like the surrounding things that 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 could be and, and you know it, it might be like a longer term thing even like Maybe it requires you to like think about it, your, your, your job situation or something like that. But uh, it's just for, for me, that was my thought process was just like, oh, I'm, I'm going to look a little bit outside where I can probably get better deals, uh, but still meet the criteria of like, it's still in, in close to downtown and whatnot. So I don't know. Yeah. 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 I think that's my next strategy is starting to move to the west side of town. West the side? Bad side of town. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I just keep looking but I think the key thing is just get out and look at stuff I, I would like to piggyback on that question uh, that question actually Chad want to see what you think of it um, I have the same issue with Rolando and you look at a house and you're like hey maybe there's some deal in here and then somebody else I would talk to somebody else and I'm like yeah there's no deal in here because the number is too thin um, do you go with your gut or do you kind of, what would you do on that? Because I felt like there's a, a bunch of um, deals that I pass on because of that. But also I'm thinking, you know, like that rehab that I did, I'm mean, like, I didn't expect to make that much money, but I did, you know, like, it's just like, maybe I should just listen to my gut a lot more, but also I'm afraid that losing my shirt. <laughs> 
I mean, everybody's welcome to pitch in here too. Like, I, I think both. Like, I, I think your your gut the gut's an interesting thing. Like, it's it's an it's an educated, experience based decision making you know, thing. Your your gut feeling, it it can lead you astray as well though. Like, there's there's blind spots with your gut feelings. So, I, th- I think both in that you've got a good intuition for real estate, and I think the location your your gut probably tells you good opportunities for location. But then, I, you know, I also apply a metric to a metric or more than one metric to it. So I like, kind of like the worst case scenario, Rolando and I were talking about earlier. Like as long as I can live with like cold, hard numbers, worst case scenario. And even it might even be that I have to write a check. Like, I, all right, I'm willing to, if worst case scenario, I had to lose 5,000 bucks on this. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like we used to do that. We would take a chance on a deal if we're like, I have no doubt that we could sell this property for 120,000 bucks in like a day. Like I just know it. And, but yeah, we thought it was gonna be worth 200 or something. And so if we had, if we had 125 in it, 120, you know, around there, I was like, all right, I could get rid of it today and at least just lose, lose a little bit of money and move out. So that's my approach is Christy is that, yeah, go with your gut. Yeah, particularly you, you're, you're knowledgeable. I mean, I don't know, I don't know who the people you're talking to. Like I would ask them like, why, why is this not a good deal? Like, yeah, what, what what is it that because the values I'm using are not right? Is it because the, you know, the rents I'm using aren't right? Like, I, I don't, there's so many people in the real estate industry, attorneys, brokers, realtors, whoever, who always want to tell you why something can't be done or why something's illegal even, you know, like that's for every attorney or CPA who said something like, oh, you can't use self-directed IRAs. That's illegal. I was like, illegal? Like, sh- tell me the, tell me the code that you're, that it's, it's break, the law is breaking and then let's look at it. And so that's a different example, but like, yeah, I would push back against kind of people who are saying that and, but like, thank them. Hey, thank you for feedback. Like what, why specifically is this not a good deal? Is it the value? Is it this? Have you found out why they say that is Christy? Well, it's another investor that I met at the RIA meeting and we, we've done deals together and things like that. And, and, and the house that I'm looking at is a bit higher. They wanted to sell at a hundred. Um, it's about close to 2000 square foot. When I make my, my estimate on the ARV, I was like, it looked like it can sell for a hundred dollars a square foot so it's closer to 200 mm. and she came back to me and said no arv is only 140 and i was like my goodness 60 <laughs> i mean uh, like <laughs> we're off by 60 i mean like yeah it is the probably bigger house in the neighborhood but i also thinking hey 2000 square foot for three bedroom one and a half bath you might be able to add another bathroom in there and just make it you know, like where it can sell. And a lot of in that area, when I look at, I don't have comp for people to rehab and resell it. They just have comp people that probably live there, rehab the kitchen and then sell it. Um, comp on, like some, they updated one bathroom, but not the rest of the house, you know, like this. But when I got in there, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to gut it, everything, you know, and I'm also a little concerned just because this is September. So by the time I'm done, it'd be the holiday season. So that means I have to hold it a little longer. Yeah. So when the split is 60, I'm a little scared. <laughs> what, what's your worst? What, how much would you have invested in, in that like purchase, rehab, everything? Just r- round numbers. Like how much would you have in it? Well, um, so I only got it like yesterday and I just happened to have personal issue like yesterday and today and I'm about to leave and see it. But my the partner that I have, she already saw it yesterday. That's why she was telling me that it's too thin. But I'm look uh, the the wholesaler says about thirty five hmm. to rehab everything. What's the purchase cost? Um, one hundred and five. Okay, so one hundred forty thousand, and let's say he's he or she is off by ten or fifteen thousand dollars, which happens all the time. You'd be at, in it for one fifty, one sixty, somewhere in there. So yeah, I would just, my worst case scenario is like, all right, I do, I spend 50 grand on this and what's, what, what, what am I super confident I can sell it for? Is it 150? Is it 160? Is it 140? And then, and then I, I would go try to prove it to myself. Like, cause you, maybe you are taking a chance. There's not a lot of, two, maybe there's not many $200,000 houses in that neighborhood yet. You're kind of pioneering mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So like I would say, all right, what's my fallback plan? Could I sell it? Could I rent it out? You know, what's, what's a good deal? That's what I'm thinking like plan A, plan B. I think that's really important these days. Like we talked about like the market changing and something we did in 2007 
that really helped us out was having a plan A, B, C, D for every property. And we ended up having to go to plan D on a lot of them. We had to rent, we had to rent some out that we couldn't sell or we just didn't, the neighborhood wasn't right during the downturn. And so that's just, that's a, another thing to think about. Right. It's a really close to a school. I'm like not an A grade school, but it's a school, which is usually um, pretty convenient for a lot of people. Yeah. And when I grew up the neighborhood, it seems to be fine. You know, like it's, it's a good B class neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Are there any $200,000 sales even like anywhere near there? Like has anybody spent 200,000 bucks in that area? Uh, yes. Because, and here's the reason why. Um, it's close to a river. So in, in Jacksonville, any time that you are riverfront, it, it become like a million dollar house. <laughs> mm, okay. But when you're like across the street, it's not you know, like, it's like all of a sudden it's 200,000 instead of a million dollar. Yeah. yeah. But there's people, I guess the point is there's people spending money. Like I like to look in a, in a radius of an area and say, has anybody spent more than 200,000, $150,000? Like if there's never been anybody who's bought a property for 200 and that or 500 or whatever, there's like no money spent. There's nobody with money wants to buy in there. Then I would be nervous, but gotcha. it's not the same property, but it's a million dollar property a block away. I mean, that's, that's promising, but, uh, and yeah, it flips. happens about four acres too, which is a bit different. They really wow. have like a lot, you know, like a lot of land and, and uh, waterfront kind of deal. I got you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, flipping, flipping, all of these can be a little tricky because you're, this is like a guess, you know, like the, you're just mm -hmm. making a best guess. And this is where the entrepreneurship comes in. Like who you can guess, you can do your data searching, but it's always like a, just a guess on what's going to work. Yeah. I know. Um, I have another question, if I may, or are yeah. we out of time yet? No, um, so I have a a how um, I have a friend that lives in Toledo. That's why I went to Toledo, and he asked me to sell the house because he doesn't want to own it anymore. And this is my first time wholesaling out of town. Mm, wow. <laughs> have you done that before? Any tips for me? I think the number is there. Um, mm -hmm house when I ARV it is about 95 to a 105. Mm -hmm. A lot of the comp doesn't, it have a detached garage and he has a two car garage attached, um, which I think is a lot of value when you live in Ohio in the winter snow <laughs> place. Yeah. Um, it's a three bedroom, one and a half, fully furnished, uh, um, a, a basement I call underground I'm like oh my gosh I'm too <laughs> Florida now um and he only wanted um like 80,000 like all the numbers so I, there's like a $20,000 spread um the repair in there is so minor they have a tenant in there for the past seven years and because he's not an investor the tenant has been paying $700 since seven years ago mm -hmm. and when I comped it it's about 900 um, so but if we take the tenant out which mean we have um, cost of painting inside and out and flooring which still I say it's under 10 mm -hmm. so I still think it's it's worth some money um, I just don't know how to present it or how to market it is it he, the, the seller needs to get 80,000 bucks? Is that their no. bottom line? No, that's what with my wholesale fee, I think. And oh, I can you, do a little less. So you would sell it for 80 and then somebody would need to spend 10,000 bucks to get it in shape. <clears throat> um, yeah. I'm out. Can, can you get the tenant out? Can the, I mean, is he, he okay or she okay with the tenant not being in the house for a while while you sell it? Well, so yes. So, um, Yes, and I'm afraid of that too, just because it's closer to this time of the year again okay. when it's winter and nobody's gonna look at houses, things like that. Um, but the tenant is on month to month, so all we need to do is give them a 30 day notice. And when I was in Toledo, we actually met with them and just tell them like, hey, this is what we're doing, we're selling the house. We give them the first offer on the house and he said that he got a lot of stuff, Chad. I'm like, seriously, this guy have more shoes than me. And I just <laughs> haven't seen that ever. So, uh, so I'm like thinking about, and 
he talked to this tenant and it seems that he don't want to move either just because he just have so much stuff in there and the home ownership is there he replaced the flooring and everything but he wanted at 60 and we're like no we cannot meet there and when he pushes for him to like hey make an offer you need to leave it seems like they just kind of i don't know some some people just kind of bury their head in the sand and don't want to talk to you right Hmm. interesting so he's paying 700 it needs some painting and flooring your friend is willing to take like 70 or send to 70 somewhere and you, you can sell it for 80. Um, I'm trying to think. So did, did Michael Temple make you an offer? He's, he's in Toledo, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's what I, I met him for that too. And I asked him like, Hey, he wanted at 60 and I said, I can't do 60. Mm-hmm. And um, what we agree upon is he, he'd be willing to present it at the RIA meeting at Toledo. I just need to make the uh, flyers and have him present it and have my numbers in there um, to answer any questions. Um, so that's what I was thinking what to do. But I'm looking at more like Facebook and yeah. Craigslist that I can promote this because I do think a lot of people would you know, like if you want to live there and you're a little bit of a handyman and I mean, like it's not, the house is not livable. The house is livable. Yeah. And if you don't want to do anything with it, you're fine. You can live in there since the tenant is in there. Uh, Yeah. I mean, a couple of thoughts. Like when I used to wholesale a lot, like I'm not afraid to take a chance because there's no risk, right? You, you, you're basically controlling this property for very little money or no money. So you get it under contract you go present it to Toledo, Rio Club, Facebook, all that, put it at 80,000 bucks or whatever number you think would make sense. If you get like crickets, if nobody responds at all, then you know you're at the right, wrong price. Like you're not at the wholesale price. So it's just a matter of testing the market. And that's, that's what I love about wholesaling and op- getting options on properties. It's, it's a way to test it for free. So I, I would, I would, I mean, you're, you're doing everything, you know how to do this stuff, like present it as well as you can. Um, if the tenant's not in there, it's going to make it a lot easier to sell it. Cause then you can just put a lot box on there and let people go in without you having to mess with it. So that's, that would be, I, I used to, when I used to wholesale, I wouldn't mess with the occupied property. Like if it's not vacant, I wouldn't try to wholesale it because it's kind of hard to, to get, cause I, what I want is like a five day, like almost like a mini auction period where I just send as many people as I can in there wholesaler, I mean, investors, 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 send them all there, blast it to your list, put it on the groups. And I say, here's my price, 79.9 or best offer. Like maybe an offer. If you don't like 79.9, make me an offer. If I got five offers at 62.5 or, you know, whatever, that's the price. I mean, that's just, and so you go back to your friend and say, all right, you know, if you can't take 62.5, I understand, but like, that's the price for investors. So we could either like do that I could, I could, you know, you sell it for less or you're going to need to put some money into it and try to put it with a realtor and sell it that way. Like there's just, sometimes they're in between. So yeah. there's, not a lot, there's not a lot of risk there other than your time. I wonder if I should just tell him to like, just hang on to it like closer to the springtime and tell the tenant that because the, the contract should be expiring in July. So if he even like get out in July yeah. and make it empty and I might just do a little work on it and just sell it retail. Yeah. I might make some money out of it also. Yeah. Yeah. You could kind of partner with them and put a little bit of money into it and try to get a higher price. Yeah. I like it's, that. I like that idea. I just never done, you know, investing in different city. I've never done that either. So <laughs> that's, that's uncharted territories. <laughs> Rwanda, hey. how, how far are you from Toledo? Like three hours? <laughs> 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 yeah, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, not that close. But hey, you know, we might figure something out. <laughs> Team up. Teamwork. Uh, maybe I'll put it on the uh, the rest of Facebook and see if anybody else like close by. I think, I think you need to follow Rolando's advice and join a bunch of Toledo uh, Facebook groups. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Neighborhoods, all that. You know, sometimes we get in our own little circles and investors might pay 65, but there might be somebody in that neighborhood who, who can pay, who pay more than all the investors would. Right. That might, that might be an idea. I just put it like for sale by owner kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm heading up, I'm heading up north this weekend. I'll just put the sign up for you. 
the contract said I can't, I can't put like uh, okay. I can't put sign in front of the house, but I can market it. So, uh, so okay. it's like now technology age, I guess that's yeah. what else we can do. <laughs> I'm going to Cleveland this weekend, so we're going to pass Toledo. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, I'll give you the address if you want to swing by and see it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Christy is ever, ever expanding her empire, like, you know, Florida <laughs> to Ohio and all over. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of funny you said that. I was just like, I was thinking about this and I'm thinking like, you know, I don't know if I'm just spreading myself too thin and instead of focusing, because one of the chapters that we were studying before is like, hey, make sure that you know what you wanted to do. And here I am just kind of like, oh, that's kind of fun to do. Let me try it. <laughs> It's easy to do, especially when you're full time. Like I, I know I found my, when I had to put food on the table with wholesaling, I was willing to go look at a lot. I mean, it's like I was fishing with like a hundred lines in the water, you know, and yeah. it, it could be distracting a little bit, but I don't know until you're, until you're overflowing with money and have so many leads, you can't handle it. It's kind of hard to, to, to turn down opportunities. Right. Gotcha. I agree. Agree. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, good luck. Thanks. Well, everybody, I've got a, um, I've got a sick kid at home today, so I'm going to go make sure she's eating, eating some, or need, doesn't need me, but uh, thank you all for being here. Rolando, like, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing all your, your story with us. I'm inspired. I think it's awesome. And thanks for letting me share it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm very inspired by this group too. So this is, this has been awesome and very educational. So awesome. Very good.